I absolutely love getting into wild places and Kosciuszko National Park, it is breathtaking. The stone and rivers and valleys here, they formed over millions of years and alongside them, the unique plant species. Millions of people come here every year and with them come millions of pairs of boots and plants are designed to travel. You can see I've picked up some seed of Bidgiwidgee. It is a local plant species and that seed is adapted to work its way into some animal fur or in this case my sock and travel all over the place. It's a great adaptation but there are some unwanted plant species that can do the same thing. up with ecologist Mark Hamilton. He's on a mission to hunt down one of the biggest problem weeds in Kosciuszko National Park, hawkweed. One of the main things you'd look at to determine how invasive a plant could be is, is it weedy elsewhere? So New Zealand, very similar climate. Um, there's over six million hectares of hawkweeds over there and we just don't want that to happen in Australia. And so what does a hawkweed look like? If we've all got our hawkweed, you know, goggles on, what, what are we looking for? Well, there's two hawkweed species in New South Wales. There's mousy hawkweed and orange hawkweed. If we're talking mousy hawkweed, unfortunately it's a yellow flower like a lot of other things up here. Orange hawkweed's a little bit easier. It's a nice distinctive orange-red flower. And it's got really long leaf hairs, which are unusually long for a plant. It can distribute via seed on the wind, or quite long distances. And it can also reproduce vegetatively through stolons. So if left in an area, it can kind of overtake and become a monoculture. It's creeping know. around like a stolon that runs across the surface. I imagine yeah. that smothers other plants as, exactly. as well as just pushes them out? Yeah, it's much like a strawberry plant. It'll send out above ground runners from which another plant can form. And it's got this thing called allelopathy. So it's releasing chemicals into the soil to discourage the growth of other plants. And so how did it find its way here? Well, that's the thing, that's the golden question. With mousy hawkweed, we suspect it was brought in from hikers on maybe hiking equipment or on boots from possibly New Zealand. With orange hawkweed, we suspect it was an ornamental plant that was possibly grown in one of the snowy hydro settlements where we think the original infestation was, was that village. And that's essentially a, a plant from a garden just jumping the fence straight into a national park. Exactly. And so the park takes a whole lot of approaches to controlling hawkweed. Yeah, yeah. Well, the first thing is we need to find it. A few years ago, we embarked on trialling the use of scent detector dogs to see if hawkweed had a distinctive scent that a dog could potentially differentiate from all the other plants around it. And it, it seems to be working. OK, let's go. Leading the charge is Sally, who is no ordinary spaniel. She's a highly trained sniffer dog, and her speciality is finding the needle in the haystack. How good is her sense of smell? Well, look, at a very conservative level, the dog has at least 30 times more receptors in their nose than we do. Wow. And then they have at least 40 times more of the part of the brain dedicated to identifying smells than we do. So when you put all that together, you know, you're talking somewhere in the several thousands more ability than we have of smelling anything. That's just amazing, isn't it? I mean, it's a totally different way of reading the environment. Yeah. Animal trainer Ryan Tate reckons dogs can do just about anything. How do you go about getting a dog focused on hawkweed? Look, it's all about breaking it down into really small steps. So in the very early days, we want the dogs to be in a pretty boring, quiet kind of environment and show any level of interest in the plant. As soon as they do that, they get their favourite reward and then gradually we introduce a more complex environment. So we start in basically a shed and then build up to the Kosciuszko National Park. Wow, and so that's her main gig is, yeah, is looking for hawkweed. hawkweed. Yeah, absolutely. What's the process to get her to find the hawkweed? Well, she's got to have all her uniform on and then I ask her to sit. I show her the money and I say, Sally, where's the weed? Find it. It's just incredible. She's working, but you can see with the tail going, she's really enjoying it. She's the happiest dog in the world right now, yeah. Underpinning the work of sniffer dogs like Sally is a comprehensive and meticulous approach to ensure no stone or weed is left unturned. We're using humans on the ground in a kind of police line search. Wow. They'll often be helicoptered into remote locations. Yep. That's a good one. 
Nice. Good job, guys. Ultimately, it's a really dedicated crew of volunteers and a dedicated crew of staff. To survey the large areas, we're using drones. And you're looking for flowers when you, you do that with the drones? Yeah, definitely. What we're looking for is the orange hawkweed flowers because mm. it has that distinctive orange-red flower that we can then target in the colour imagery. So we've got an algorithm that looks at the images and detects those pixels that correspond to the colour of wow. the orange-red flowers. So that's really where we save our time. So you might have a drone out surveying and collecting images over, say, 60 hectares, quite a large area. But if you were to go through those photos manually, um, you would, you know, you'd be here until, you know, <laughs> the world's longest next month. slide night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does she find them in places that you, you don't expect? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's where the dog comes in really handy is when weeds are growing under tussocks or you know in between rocks or boulders or fallen trees and things like that. So she's checking all of those little divots, isn't she? So absolutely. Oh, she's got one. Yes! So oh, you good girl. Good girl. And so this is it. This is the plant we're and after. And she gets a chuck of the ball as a reward. Absolutely. That tennis ball is her favourite thing in the world. So what are we going to do? We're going to pull this out? No, what we're going to do is we're actually going to mark it with a pin and you can do the honours with that, Millie. Ah, OK. And I will take some GPS coordinates of the site. So that's for the guys to come in and, and take care of it? Absolutely. So over the next couple of days, someone will come down here verify the plant, take some notes and treat it appropriately. Fantastic. A bit more looking to do? Yeah, sure is. <laughs> this is weed control on a really epic scale. There's a lot of resources going into this, but as gardeners, we can all play our part. We need to choose the right species to grow in the right places. But also, when we come to places like this, we need to be careful. Check your boots, check your socks, and don't bring any unwanted travellers with you. And then we can keep this plant-filled paradise for a long time to come.